facilities operation and planning. I'd like to uh, turn it over to Kurt, uh, who is going to go over the master plan and vision presentation. Yes, tonight we have members from SHP Architects uh, who we hired this past November to do a district-wide facility master plan and visioning process of our uh, facilities. Uh, they began this past month in uh, communications with members of our staff. I'm here tonight to kind of give you an opening uh, presentation of what the next year is going to look like for us. First of all, thank you all for the opportunity to work with you all and in the greater Latrobe community. Uh, it's our honor to take this very seriously. Uh, the process of pulling the community together around an educationally driven facility and master plan. I, I'm Todd Thackeray, again, Vice President with SHP. And? Uh, my name is Josh Predovich. Uh, I'm an architect with SHP. I've been with the firm for about 21 years, most of it doing uh, just this type of work, working with school districts and master planning uh, and pulling together educational envisioning and facilities uh, improvements. Um, also listed up there, you'll see uh, Carrie Mel Testa and Jeff Parker. Um, they're two of our other team members that are going to be intimately involved with your district. Um, their focus will be on the educational visioning side, uh, and then as we start to pull uh, facility assessment information and, and educational visioning together, um, they'll be uh, intimately involved in that process. What this is all about is developing a community-created plan. A plan that's educationally fantastic, financially responsible, and community supported. So the process that we are going to lay out for you tonight will do that for you and your community. And so um, what I'd like to do, so uh, Superintendent warned us that we had 20 minutes on the dock, uh, and if we went over that, then we'd get the name. Um, so, um, we've got roughly about 20 slides to go through. Um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk to you about uh, the, the first half of the process um, with the anticipation that we're going to be seeing you uh, more than a few times this year. Um, and so ultimately, uh, what we'd like to leave, with, uh, leave you with tonight is an understanding of really what's going to happen between now and May. Um, so the first thing that we've been developing is um, there will be a website that's going to be created um, that we've been working with your team on. Um, and you'll see that down there at the bottom, uh, futureglsd.com. Um, that website is under construction right now. Um, effectively, that website is going to act as our communication tool, which is going to have information about the facility assessments, the educational visioning process, and then ultimately the master planning process. So this will be a place where the community can go to see updates uh, as we work through uh, the overall process. And so as that uh, website starts to go live, we'll obviously bring that information back to the board so that the you can have a full understanding of what's going to be available there. Um, to talk about the process, each one of you should have a handout that shows uh, this master planning process as well as the schedule. Um, and so, uh, again, tonight, we're not going to go through all, uh, effectively, all five of the steps. Um, our focus is really going to be to talk to you about the facility assessment uh, component, the educational visioning component, um, and then we'll leave the conversation about the vision, the vision test fit and the uh, master planning community advisory team uh, components and then the final master planning presentation to the board for uh, later presentations. Um, but understand that the, we have a process in place that's been very successful in the past um, and what we uh, have really worked to do is understand how to uh, work with the school district to really um, make this process yours. Um, and really make it about your community, and make it about your schools and your staff, your students. Um, so, and taking a look at the timeline, um, you can see that um, in the month of January and, and leading a little bit into February, we've already started the, the, the facility and site assessment uh, component of our process. Um, and the next step really would be um, this uh, next blue bar here is a community forum. Um, and that community forum has been scheduled. Um, we are looking at will correct me if I'm wrong, but we're looking at February 24th uh, at 6.30, and that's going to take place at the high school auditorium. And our goal at that time is going to be uh, to start this process and to alert the community to their opportunities of where they can plug in and have opportunities to provide input. 
Um, but what you'll see here is effectively the uh, durations of what we're anticipating as far as the educational visioning and then into that visioning test fit, uh, which is where we take the facility assessment information and what we've learned in educational visioning about how you want to deliver education in the future and really apply it to your existing facilities. So that's the vision test fit. And then you see the uh, community advisory team master plan bar. Um, across the top, you'll see the district steering team, which is you know, that effectively is really the uh, facilities operation and planning team uh, that's already been meeting uh, on a regular basis. Um, and then also across the top in the July through the, through the November time period, you'll see the finance advisory team, which again, that would be Dan's group along with, you know, we're anticipating that that would also um, have uh, members, leadership from your school uh, authority. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're working toward building these teams together and starting to put these folks in place. Um, so that we can be successful in ultimately developing master plan options and making final recommendations. So what I'd like to do, I want to talk just briefly about uh, how we create these teams and who the members are on these teams. So I mentioned the district steering team and its uh, equation to the, the uh, planning committee that's already been developed. Um, so you can see the types of folks that uh, we typically uh, include in, in these types of, uh, of steering teams. Um, and there's opportunities for folks to come into that steering team as we start to get into more detail uh, on any of the one facilities or on any master plan option. Um, but ultimately our goal is to have a consistent sort of team meeting uh, on a regular basis throughout the entire process. And then again, obviously on the finance uh, advisory team is really uh, the folks that you would expect in looking at financial options and strategies, um, thinking about uh, the multiple uh, different master plan concepts that uh, we might ultimately develop as a team and testing those um, and thinking about the long-term operations costs uh, and permanent improvement and project costs. So uh, and again, looking at the process, we're really going to focus on the, the first two. So the first one's that facility and site assessments. Um, and so that's been a process that we started. Um, effectively, we started at the, uh, the week that we came in to interview with you. We uh, took tours of your facilities. Uh, had some opportunities to meet with some of your administrators at that point in time so that we could better understand uh, the, you know, the mission that you were hiring uh, an architecture group to help you, uh, uh, you know, along this journey. Um, and so what we've been working on is to take all this information that Kurt has been developing uh, over the last couple of years and um, test that against what we understand in the market, uh, what we understand from school construction. Um, you know, the market right now is very volatile and so we're doing everything that we can to try and get the best handle on what cost we should be using as we start to uh, cost out any improvements or any maintenance uh, that's necessary under existing facilities. Um, you'll see, you know, this is also going to take in uh, looking at updated uh, enrollment projections, looking at student capacities, um, and we've also started a process where we've been uh, effectively having one-on-one -on -one meetings with your school administrators uh, and your custodial maintenance staff, where we've got meetings scheduled with a uh, school resource officer um, with the AD, with um, the technology, uh, student services. We're really trying to get a very broad understanding of, of what's going on in the facilities and what the type of, types of things that are um, out there that are going to affect uh, future improvements um, in delivery of education. So uh, we're really in that sort of information gathering uh, portion of the process. And that's what's going to lead us up to this first community forum. Um, our goal at that first forum is really going to be uh, welcoming the, the community into the process, explaining the process to them, similar to how I'm doing tonight, um, showing the community where they have the opportunities to engage in that process. So again, talking about the website, a place where they can go at any point in time to understand where the district is uh, in this year-long uh, process that we're developing. Um, we're going to talk about those conditions, uh, capacities, and enrollment. Um, so some of that information obviously has already been developed. Some of it still needs to be um, sort of uh, uh, vetted and, and uh, finalized, if you will. And then we'll be looking uh, to provide that opportunity for the community where they would uh, potentially be able to plug in, um, either participating in educational visioning or community advisory team meetings or, or other forums. Um, so that's really the goal of the meeting on the 24th. Um, the next piece is really that educational visioning uh, component, which we really feel uh, is, is so important in this process to understand uh, what the future of education is going to look like in your district. You know, we typically talk about what's the next 10 years look like, what's the next 20 years look like. Um, and so we've got a process in place uh, that, um, uh, it, that's been successful for us in the past in developing a couple of different types of teams. 
Um, the first team is really uh, an educational visioning team that uh, ultimately is going to be made up of two different groups. There's going to be a community group uh, and a student group, and they're going to meet roughly about five times, I think is what we've laid out. Um, and the idea is, is that we're going to bring the community group together, then we're going to bring the student group together, and then we're going to test concepts between the two. Um, and so our goal with that is really to try and understand uh, what's successful, what's working today, but also uh, what your students aren't seeing. What are the things that they aren't seeing in their daily education uh, that they uh, believe could be impactful as they start to think about their futures? Um, so you can see this information about, you know, sort of our goals of taking information, obviously, of what you've done to date, um, but then also looking at the, at the, at the goals of, of where you want to, uh, to be in the future. And so as we look at these two different groups, our community group is uh, typically made up of about 40 or 50 uh, community members. We've done them bigger, we've done them smaller as a sort of a target. Um, but um, we're really looking for a really uh, wide cross-section uh, of your community so that we can start to understand how the school district uh, education impacts your community, but also how your community impacts your education. Um, we typically hold those in the evenings. It's usually easier for the community members to be able to attend. Um, and we do a lot of table exercises. It's a lot of hands-on types of activities. It's not just uh, folks up in, in front of the room lecturing about what education is like. These are really uh, exercises that are um, developed in order to guide us towards uh, understanding what shifts uh, need to take place in order to get you from where you are today to where you want to be. And then the student group, um, I think we try to keep that group a little bit smaller and we typically try and engage uh, fifth grade through 12th grade students. Um, we typically at the end will do that obviously during the school day. So I think your lunch and learn uh, activities that might be a good time for those, um, uh, for those groups to take place. Um, and then again, same thing, we'll have a series of table exercises. It won't be uh, the same as what we do with the community group. They'll be a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging for the students. Um, and so um, you can see sort of some of the information of the, what we'll be trying to pull out of those groups. And as far as the, the, the way that the process is engaged, um, effectively, uh, we, we start by trying to understand where you are. Um, then developing and refining where you want to be and then sort of trying to understand how to conceptualize that. And so as you see these meetings sort of laid out, again, there's a series of four meetings uh, is what we're anticipating. And so at each time, our goal is going to be to come in and meet with the community group in the evening and then meet with the student group the next day, uh, sort of lunchtime. And so we'll go through those exercises with each of the groups. And as we work our way through the steps, you know, again, our goal is to start to refine as we go forward. And then that fourth meeting is really uh, where we sort of consolidate all the information that we've learned and, and start to, um, you know, sort of graphically and, and um, verbally illustrate what the plan is, what the future uh, educational vision plan will be. And so the first meeting, again, we, uh, this one's really about where are we today, uh, what successes out there, opportunities. Um, there, this one, we're really asking for the district to sort of present uh, your current uh, educational vision um, and understand you know, what, what things are going right in the district, also understanding uh, what, where are areas or challenges and where, where, where can we do better. Um, and so that's the, you know, sort of the first meeting, and then we start to talk about that 10-year look ahead. Um, and then the student group will do something similar, right? Um, you know, district goals and strategies, so we're going to have that from the community meeting and then we're going to try and test that against the students. You know, do they understand that this is where the, where the, where the school wants you to uh, be headed from an educational standpoint? Um, and so we'll, we'll work with them as well as what, what this 10 years ahead look like. In the second group, so we'll take that information again as we take the community information to the students, we take the students' information back to the community group. And so we'll look at the student, uh, a student group work and then do a 10 year look ahead and we've got a series of exercises, uh, the start, stop and keep exercise and then the what will we see exercise. So again, uh, table exercises where we engage smaller groups. Uh, and then student group two, we do something similar uh, with those folks and there's a couple other different activities with those uh, in, that, in that series. And then the third uh, and final group before we start to synthesize is the the readout on the what will we see exercise, um, the visual vocabulary exercise, and then we have a, we have a game that we play, it's called a, the, the space game, um, which ultimately is a, it's a game and ultimately developed in order to help folks understand facility needs uh, against the types of spaces that are necessary in order to make a facility successful. And so it's a, it's a fun activity where everybody gets a chance to, 
to ultimately uh, either develop a pod of a classroom wing or they could potentially develop an entire building if they choose to. Uh, but it's an exercise where everybody uh, has an opportunity to really understand the, the, uh, the connection between uh, student groups, how many students are in a group in an educational setting against the size of a facility and what those relationships back and forth. Um, so we'll work with both teams on that type of, uh, of an exercise. And then the final uh, event, obviously, is, is a culminating event to, uh, you know, sort of uh, respond out on all the things that we've learned. Uh, and this information is really what's going to go into the next phase, which we'll hope to share with you uh, probably closer to, uh, to the end of your school year. And so that's that vision test fit piece. Um, that'll be where we take the edu everything we learned in educational visioning, everything that we learned in the assessments, and we combine those two and try to apply that to how your facilities are currently meeting those goals uh, and how they are um, challenged by those goals as we think about the next 10 years. And then finally, um, we'll get into the master planning, which is really where we'll start to develop concepts. You know, the, everything in the, in the first three uh, components of our, of our process really are about gathering information so that we can really start to develop successful master plans. Uh, and so uh, we'll talk to you about how we develop a, a community advisory team, what that looks like. Again, another opportunity for the community to be involved in the process. Um, and then how we develop community master plans. Um, and I think the main message that we want to leave you with today is, is that we're coming to you with, with open mind. Um, we really believe that there are a number of options that should be on the table for your district. Um, we've had an opportunity, obviously, to walk through your facilities. And we don't think that, um, that there's any one plan right now that really stands out as a, a clear path forward without going through this process to really investigate further. So that's going to be our goal as we work with you over the next year. And our ultimate goal is going to be come back to the board with a, a master plan recommendation. And obviously, um, we, we haven't probably highlighted it, but each of the board members obviously have different opportunities to be involved in this process throughout um, with each of the different groups. And so we're hoping to see each of you uh, in each of these different uh, facilitated sessions and, and talk with you further and get to know each one of these. So with that, so the visioning portion will take place this spring. The test fitting, we'll do that over the summer. Well, there's not a lot of staff here, and we'll work to see what the implications are of making those that educational vision work in your existing facility, and what it costs, so that we can turn this into numbers, so that you can have fair, equal comparisons of all options as we go to master. Plan. And it's all about creating that educationally fantastic master plan that's financially responsible and that the community develop and supports. So that's where we're headed. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.